third and final test between the Windies and New Zealand will be played at Kensington Oval from June 26th to 30th. Originally, the third test was scheduled to be played at the Guyana National Stadium, but was relocated following the board and the government of Guyana not being able to find a mutual agreeable resolution relating to the Cricket Administration Bill. The WICB noted that the test will be a bonus for cricket fans in Barbados, who also got to see the three T20 internationals between the West Indies and England back in March. However, the organizers of the Lima Call Caribbean Premier League say that the matches scheduled for Guyana will take place as planned and are not affected by the passing of the Cricket Administration Bill in Guyana. Meanwhile, over at the Trelawney Multiplex in Jamaica, New Zealand reached 203 for 9 at the end of day 1 of their 3-day tour match against a Jamaica Select 11. Kane Williamson has so far top scored at 47, while Damien Jacobs has 4 for 69. The Sajikor West Indies High Performance Centre had a good first day in their first class 4-day match against the visiting Bangladesh A at Kensington Oval. Batting first, they were dismissed for 354. CBC's Sean Green reports on the first session. HBC had just lost Chadwick Walton with the score on 11 and were about to lose a sad foot in him, scaring a catch to mid-off. And after making just four, I'm sure he was a sad foot in indeed. This brought out Jermaine Blackwood from Jamaica and he was all business, cutting through squarish cover with some disdain. His partner was Leon Johnson, here sweeping and sweeping well, that's four. Don't even bother chasing that if you don't have a fine leg. A full diet of spin was being served up and Johnson wasn't phased. That's four more through the vacant mid-wicket area. Johnson was tired of seeing the umpire swing in his arm and he wanted him to raise them. Maybe a six over a long on can do the trick. Yep, it did. Blackwood giving himself room, backing away and spanking this one through square once more. He was looking dangerous. He was batting like a tailor, threading this one through the field. And not a man moves shot. Not sure if they saw it or not. Either way, a beautiful shot for four. Enter the pace and exit the pace. You can't bowl that to Jermaine Blackwood. I'll go and try something else, son. And the bowler took his advice. And he got one to leave him outside the off stump. Hands on head. Well, maybe I should have done this instead. Then the bowler pitched one up in the same over. And Blackwood took him to the cleaners once more. This one going through mid-wicket. His partner Johnson says, you can handle the pace. I'll take care of the spin. Pulling through mid-wicket again. The fielder came around to get a close-up of the four. Blackwood hooking at a short one and picked out the fielder at short mid-wicket. The others celebrate, but he couldn't because it was a drop catch. And Blackwood gets the life. Johnson continuing to stay on top of the slow bowling. Driving through cover. The fielder puts in a dive and caught a handful of fresh air. The ball was past him in a flash. Blackwood was tested with another short one, and he latches on quickly and bang through mid-wicket. But another short one brought his downfall, caught by Hassan, off the bowling of Mukhtar Ali for 45, as HBC went to lunch on 100 for three. Sean Green, CBC Sports. Thanks, Sean. As I said, the HPC went on to score 354. Leon Johnson top scored at 74. Jonathan Carter got 54. Jerome Blackwood, 45. Carlos Brathwaite, 42. And Sheldon Cottrell, 42. Super Center Spartan is the best T20 team in Barbados. That's because last night at Kensington Oval, they easily brushed aside counterpoint Wanderers to win this year's BCA Sajikor General T20 tournament by eight wickets. Wanderers batted first and were bowled out for 92, with man of the match Omar Marshall taking two for 11. Again, CBC's Sean Green reports on some of the action from that innings. Wanderers won the toss and decided to bat first. Andre Gill to Shane Mosley. Andre Gill to the boundary through mid-wicket for the very first four. Then his partner, Jonathan Drakes, looking to clear long on, finds the waiting hands of a stationary Shamar Brooks. First wicket down for the Wanderers, seven for one. Gil to Mosley once more, wrapped on the pad, a loud appeal, and the umpire says, yes, you're a goner. 
This brought in Kurt Edwards, here timing this drive to perfection, racing through the covers, only to be stopped by the ropes. And the on drive was certainly on and down the ground. Beautiful shot off consecutive deliveries. And Edwards now seemed ready for battle. But a Spartan trap was set and Edwards was caught in it. Edwards popping a catch to Andrea Marshall at short mid wicket. That's three down now with the score at 28. And just like one on one always makes two in cricket, short plus wide usually equals four as Raymond Reefer smoked Jamil short through point and Reefer reached 15 before he got a nick onto this short delivery and the Wanderers now in deep trouble wondering what to do at this stage as they went on to make 92 in 20 overs. Sean Green, CBC Sports. Well, Spartan had an easy time chasing down that total, reaching 93 for two in 16.4 overs with Maradon Ben who top scoring with 28. That's the first half in sports, back in a bit. <laughs> Welcome back. The scandal that rocked Caribbean football a few years ago when several regional football administrators were linked with bribery allegations is here again. A newspaper in England is claiming it has discovered new evidence that a high-profile member of Qatar football paid out millions of dollars in order to secure the bid for the 2022 FIFA World Cup showpiece. The Sunday Times claims it found a series of bank statements, letters, emails that point to multiple payments totaling $5 million by the man who was then the country's top footballing official. This man in question is Mohammed bin Hammam. Qatar claims he was never officially involved in the World Cup bid. Now these allegations arrive with less than two weeks to go until the start of this year's World Cup in Brazil. And here is Cutter's response to the allegations. Following Tuesday's newspaper articles, we vehemently deny all allegations of wrongdoing. We'll take whatever steps are necessary to defend the integrity of Cutter's bid, and our lawyers are looking into the matter. The right to host the tournament was won because it was the best bid and because it's time for the Middle East to host its first FIFA World Cup. CNN has not yet authenticated the documents detailed in the report, and FIFA referred all comments to their chief investigator. CNN was unsuccessful in contacting Hammam. So for more on the Sunday Times report, here's Deputy Editor Sarah Baxter. The whole trail of emails, payments, slush funds, bank statements, uh, wire transfers, etc., showing that uh, people with a bearing on the vote from places from African states and from uh, the Caribbean and also a Pacific Islander uh, were either soliciting uh, funds for themselves or their football associations or uh, money was transferred uh, into private bank accounts in some cases, money also transferred through Mr. Bin Hammam's daughter's account um, in return for favors and we've got people saying thanks so much I really appreciate that and some in some cases can I have some more of where that came from so uh, and you know then assuring Mr. Bin Haman that they will be standing by Qatar and its bid so we've proven beyond a shadow of a doubt that the whole process was corrupt and tainted and that's why the only answer is to have a complete rerun and that's the only way for the taint to be removed Barbados has assembled a strong group of athletes on a mission to retain the CUT track and field title in Trinidad and Tobago this year. CBC's Anne-Marie Burke reports. A strong 40-member team has been named to defend the Caribbean Union of Teachers track and field games title Barbados won back in 2012 in Jamaica. This year's games go to Trinidad and features athletes under 9 through to under 15. 
11 of the members were on the 2012 winning team, including this year's captains Shawnita Broom and Anthony Hoyt Small. The team who has familiar names like Samaya Dell, Sky Spencer Lane, Ayare Ayaboso, Akiza Pollard, Malakai Harris, Lalani Anajani Haddock, Rosette Hoyt and Tremaine Smith, among others, has two months left to prepare and are at the stadium on Monday and Wednesday evenings and Saturday mornings. There will also be a special retreat leading into the games. We normally bring in a psychologist. We have had calls over the years who come in and give them a motivational talk and, and, and teach them about, about um, mental imaging and so on in order to, to, to help them to perform better. We, we had at times we brought in Siebert Strong, a former Olympian, to talk to them. So we'll be doing things like that as well, as well as, as, as the bonding. Um, so we get to be together as a, as a team, um, we get to learn their peculiarities, and we get to teach them a couple of things that we think that are necessary. The games are set for July 25th to 26th, and the team leaves Barbados on July 23rd. Anne-Marie Burke, CBC.